Did you guys know, and I, I don't I don't mean to blow your minds, but did you know that it's not just Teslas that catch on fire? It's not a Tesla. This is a BMW, and they, they a big chunk of them uh, are banned right now in Korea because they were catching on fire so much. So we're going to talk about that story. Also, it's a very bizarre story about Model 3. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about the big tweet and, and the whole take going uh, private with Tesla. And there's a lot of other cool stories. So uh, stick around. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to those of you who are watching me live on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And of course, if this is your first time here and you want to know everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, you guys came to the right place. I promise you. So go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you don't miss anything that's going on in the world of electric cars moving forward. All right, let's talk about this. This is this is kind of an interesting story. And I know this kind of doesn't have anything to do with, with electric cars, but it kind of does because, you know, Obviously, Tesla is a new technology, gets scrutinized a lot. And when um, a few Teslas caught on fire, everybody was like, oh, every Tesla catches on fire. When, um, what was that actress that had her husband, uh, uh, a car got caught on fire and it was another big deal, uh, McC McCormick, right? Yeah. So, uh, well, uh, a lot of us also know that way more <laughs> gas cars catch on fire because, you know, like they have gas in it. <laughs> so, uh, and I think there's a famous actor who also died. You know, uh, he was glorifying movies about gas cars and he died in a gas car fire. Um, anyway, in Fast and the Furious, it's just his name escapes me. I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I don't really watch that movie that much. So anyway, or at all. Uh, but here's the story. BMW uh, had uh, quite a few cars caught, caught on fire in, in, in uh, South Korea. And at some point, and, and they, I believe, recall like 100,000 of them, and uh, not all of them have been inspected, even though they're conducting emergency inspections. But basically, their Minister of Transportation had banned all those cars that are affected, and there's quite a few of them, so you cannot drive those BMWs at all on the road right now, except for one, if you're going to get that car inspected to see if it's going to catch on fire anytime soon. Um, now, I listen, I'm, I'm you know... This is not really about, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, throw shade on BMW. I mean, this happens uh, all the time in terms of, you know, fires and in terms of, you know, uh, of having to recall something. Now, this is a big one, and this is actually a pretty major story if, if, if a country is banning a, a large chunk of a brand's, uh, 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 you know, fleet that's already on the road. But nevertheless, I mean, this is a whole point here is that this happens all the time, doesn't make the news much. This is the first time I'm actually seeing this make the national news. The story is uh, from CNN. And this picture was taken by uh, Jean Kyung Ki, who uh, says that that was his BMW. And there's tons of other pictures, not tons, but there are quite a few other pictures of other BMWs catching on fire in Korea. And uh, it was the first time I'm seeing this being reported. Now, yes, the local news a lot of times report on uh, cars on fire, but that's because they usually report on traffic. Um, and when there's something on fire, it's, it's exciting, but not as a thing, right? Um, so yeah, so the, I thought that was a pretty interesting story. Um, now, uh, as far as, far as uh, you know, and, and Tesla hasn't really caught on fire. I, I haven't heard anything recently, definitely not the Model 3, uh, though you know what is happening to Model 3? Their bumpers are falling off now. Uh, let me tell you about that story. It's it's kind of funny, actually, if anything. But before that, let me remind you guys that this uh, show and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Teslas that are not on fire, which are a majority of them, I believe. Uh, there's a discount uh, that they uh, gave uh, this community. So if you want to shop there, go ahead and grab it right from the description of this video. It's in every video. Um, and you, you guys can save yourselves a few bucks. Um, and I have quite a few of those accessories on my Tesla. I sold my second one. All right, uh, let's talk about the story. <laughs> you know, at first when I saw one of them, uh, this one guy, I mean, let me let me let me show you this full screen, right? This one guy said he was driving home after you know uh, you know bringing it home, and all of a sudden his uh, uh, a bumper fell off, right? And, and uh, check this out, uh, uh, hashtag devastated. Really devastated? Your bumper fell off, dude. <laughs> I don't know if that's the correct word. Uh, but he ran right to Elon and I was like, oh, great. Uh, who knows? Maybe somebody bumped him on the parking lot uh, and, and he didn't see it. And, the, you know, who knows? But then there's another guy who says, hey, same thing, same thing happened to me. And they both kind of are saying that it's because of uh, rain. 
or one of them actually drove into a lot of water i guess uh, 12 to 15 inches of water um so this is interesting and tesla replied and they're saying that they're investigating this they're in touch with i believe both owners um i don't see anything else reported but it's uh, definitely it's definitely happening. Uh, I'm I would be curious to see what went wrong. I mean that can't be. A, I mean I'm sure these bumpers are not on you know glued on the double sided tape. So I would like it would be interesting to know what happened. Uh, hopefully it's just isolated incidents. But nevertheless. All right, listen. It's been what you know three minutes into the show and we haven't talked about the tweet. We got to talk about the tweet. All right. So the latest on this. Um, the board of directors uh, designated, I think, three independent uh, directors to form a committee uh, to pretty much sit there and wait for Elon Musk's proposal or taking Tesla private. We, he hasn't done yet, but he uh, and, and the committee both retain attorneys and accountants. So now it looks legit. Now it looks like things are happening. Um, and we're going to address the whole Saudi Arabia uh, uh, comments. That I've had of obviously a lot of comments uh, in the comment section. So I'm going to address a couple of them at the end of the show. Uh, but that's, um, you know, that's uh, at, at least now things are moving forward seriously, right? This does, because at, at some point it looked like Elon just pulled it out his butt, right? Um, because, you know, funding secured, where's the fund? I don't know. I'm quite. So, but now it looks like it's happening. Um, not everybody is happy where the money is coming from. Again, just wait a little. All right, let's move on to another story. This is like this could be this could have been a lead story. But as you know, Neo. This is a Chinese-based company which I like a lot actually uh, because they, um, you know, them and Byton, I would say one of the most innovative. Uh, uh, startups right now, electric car startups. And, you know, what they have is what I wish Tesla would have kept, which was a battery swapping technology. And um, they they offer that. Uh, they just started making their cars. I think they made the first thousand or so. They're delivering them in, in China at about $60,000, which is about half of what Model X sells in China, well, even here. Um, uh, it's pretty. It's pretty good. I believe it has a 180 mile uh, uh, worth of range. It's good looking SUV, if you ask me. Uh, and uh, they are also hoping to uh, expand to other markets, including North America. Well, guess what? They're announcing that they're going to. They not announcing. They just they filed. Uh, I believe it was either today or yesterday. They filed for IPO here in the United States on the New York uh, uh, Stock Exchange, um, and they're hoping to raise 1.8 billion dollars because you know they are burning through their cash. I think they only have maybe six or seven hundred uh, million left, which is not that much for a car maker, as we kind of know. You know, based on what Tesla has been spending on their Model 3 production. But I'm excited about them. You know, another thing that they have is also uh, they have kind of a, 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 a mobile charging stations where, you know, a, a, a car will come to your work or office or whatever and will charge you up while you're while you're working, while you're at home. Here in the United States, and I'm sure in other countries, there are same companies that exist for fueling, right? They will uh, fuel your, uh, your car while you're at work. But uh, that same concept goes for... Uh, for the you know charging of 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 neo cars, so I'm really excited about them. Let's see how it happens. It's funny, right, that Elon Musk is taking his company private, and these guys. And by the way, a lot of them call Tesla fighter in China. They're translated as Tesla fighter, uh, and they uh, they actually want to go public, but they need to raise money. And I understand. I think even Elon said that, hey, you know, we needed to take Tesla public at some point. We needed to raise money and get investors and strategic investors and partners. And I understand that. And he actually doesn't. Uh, I think he said somewhere that he uh, he is open to a, an idea once they go private to actually go public again. Who knows? But that I mean that all makes sense. All right. Another thing is Electrify America, as you know, sponsored by Dieselgate. This is like my favorite project because you know the horrible Dieselgate scandal is now producing results and. As you know, Electrify America and there's also Electrify Canada now are, are using that, what, $2 billion that they had to pay out in, in penalties uh, to build a charging network. But they're also producing now very first Electrify America uh, car ads to promote electric cars. Um, no, so here's the ad, and I encourage you to, I'll, I'll try to put in the description of this video. I didn't want to use the, because uh, the music is copyrighted from Flintstones. I didn't want to get my video flagged. I got to tell you, I mean, you're pretty much watching the video right now. Uh, there's no words right now anyway, it's just music playing. I don't really get it. I don't really get it. I'm not really sure if it showed case, showcases the, 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 the cars that, that well. Um, yeah, I know they show a few of them at the end, but maybe 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think if this was a, a you know, something that can appeal to people. I feel like it needs to appeal to the uh, uh, hesitation that people have about owning electric cars. And I'm not really sure if this really solved the problem. You know, hopefully they would maybe, well, they can be innovative and do like uh, what Tesla did with the Love Day project, even though I don't like the outcome and how it was run. I mean, the idea is great, you know, to crowdsource uh the uh the promotion of an idea from very people who've adopted the idea um so maybe maybe something that they can do in the future so all right let me move on to a bunch of comments that of course you guys left uh on my video about you know saudi arabia um you know investing into tesla before that of course i want to say thank you to my new patreons uh steven leopold uh just became a patron. as you can see it can it can take just a dollar and i really appreciate uh, you know, everyone's contributions, but because overall it contributes to the show and Scott Stewart also uh, became a Patreon. And by the way, you know, uh, depending on the level, but you can watch me live on uh, Patreon. And then of course I do the segment called the extra mile where I stick around for, for a little bit and talk to you guys live. And as you can see, the, the, the chat room is uh, already uh, uh, going right here. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're gonna we're gonna talk to you about a few things. I'm probably gonna give you an update about me settling down here in Sacramento, uh, and yeah. So, but before that, there's a couple of comments of the day. So let me go over them and address them. Uh, both are about the tweet, so I'm gonna bring that back up. Um, and one com one comes from Chris L. And uh, and by the way, uh, look, these two comments, um, it's sort of uh, they're the the shortest ones that I've seen, but there are quite a few other people saying very similar things uh chris says i think they're looking at, he's talking about saudi uh, arabia as investors right uh for tesla to, to go private um he says uh, i think they're looking at the future and trying to get ahead and uh, i think they're big admirers of musk himself rather than just tesla and they're using his weakness as their way in um yeah listen i i think a lot of you what are you a lot of comments that i met uh, sounded like you guys either weren't listening or didn't watch the full video. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. As, as a matter of fact, I think I almost said it right away. That's a great thing that a country that's invested so heavily in oil and obviously have a lot of their own reserves um, is e even there seeing the future as electric. This is huge. This is huge for an electric movement. So let me just be very clear about that. I don't know, I can repeat it one more time or twice, so just there's more time in this video dedicated to this, but I did say that. So my only other, problem with this well a couple but the problem with this topic is that their main investments and their interest is still in big oil obviously and you know most <laughs> money talks right this is a business arrangement this is a business uh uh um, and and right now they already own up to you know, a little uh, under five percent of tesla but you know if they're gonna own you know a third and by the way that's elon's estimation and you know how often he gets things right when he estimates things you know, uh, that's a that's they're going to be the largest investor in Tesla. And by the way, you know, uh, right now Tesla is an American company, American innovative company. You know, if their biggest investor becomes Saudi Arabia, they're just going to be a Saudi Arabia company. Really, it's like Tiger Woods is a black golfer, right? He's half Asian. Do you guys know that? <laughs> But, you know, people label stuff all the time and Tesla can get labeled from all from an American company to a Saudi Arabia company. It's, you know, the image can suffer. And there are quite a few people who have a problem with that, uh, specifically their interest in oil. And will that affect their investment and, and their decisions as the board members? I'm sure they're going to get some board seats with that kind of uh, uh, investment. And um, hey, Curtis, how are you? I uh, see you in the chat room. Uh, we'll talk in a second. Uh, and uh, let me get to the second uh, uh, um, comment. And this one uh, comes from uh, Matthias. Matthias. Um, he says, I have a problem with Saudi Arabia funding terrorist organizations and keeping the bloody conflict in the Middle East alive for decades. You know, this is, I've seen a lot of comments like this as well. I mean, you know, this fund that's going to be investing into Tesla, they are uh, an official fund uh, and investment for the country of Saudi Arabia. It's not like a kind of private fund. It's it's their country's money and you know some people are making the point and and there is some truth to it that hey, listen some of this money is going to go to tesla some of this money is going to go to you know oil uh, uh and and gas uh car power gas powered car uh, industry but a lot of it is going to go to terrorism and a lot of people are uneasy about that you know it's kind of the same you know as they call it bloody money there are a lot of people are uncomfortable with that and it can affect the perception of tesla and the perception of electric cars 
and you know gotta be careful with, about, about that now a lot of you said that you guys maybe don't think that the the the, the religion and and the human rights especially the rights of uh, women and and sexual minorities are going to be a problem but i'm gonna tell you guys i literally gave you an example in my video if a business woman or a gay man uh, uh, um, uh, comes to Saudi Arabia to do business, they're going to have a really hard time because of their laws and traditions. And uh, overall, Tesla is a company, and you have to admit, yes, of course, I know there are some conservatives and Trump supporters or customers of Tesla, admirers of Elon Musk, but in a majority, Tesla appeals to more liberal, kind of a high-tech, cutting-edge tree huggers, right? And, and those people usually have a big problem with with a country like Saudi Arabia that that has a major, you know, uh, uh, human rights violation, especially of women and minorities and so forth. So that can also uh, uh, take a big chunk of fans and and kind of subtracted from uh, uh, this this community. And I would hate to you know to see that happen. That's why I'm so concerned about this. So um, you know, I share some of these concerns, and I understand. On the other hand, it's good that. Uh, a country that's so heavily invested in oil is investing in Tesla and, and, and green energy, and they've already invested, I think, up to two hundred a uh, 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 billion dollars in, into uh, similar projects. But I, you know, the, this this can damage the reputation of Tesla and and the electric car companies, and that is my concern. Um, so that's where I am. I'm at right now. I, I'm looking forward to more of your comments, guys. Definitely let me know. Uh, I'm interested to uh, to read some of them. I actually enjoyed reading them. And a lot of them disagree with me. A lot of them disagree with each other. But it's good that we're having a conversation. All right. Thank you for your comments. As you can see, we got the chat going on here for the extra miles. If you're Patreons, stay on. We'll chat a little bit as we always do. I've really been enjoying those segments. If you're watching me on YouTube, of course, thank you so much for watching. I'll be here back, uh, of course, tomorrow. I do videos every day. Uh, and uh, Or you can join Patreon, patreon.com slash electric and you'll be supporting the show and spending a little more time with me. All right, guys, uh, I am excited to, see, to get this going. Other than that, see you tomorrow, and remember to stay charged.